The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish Transmigration Chapter 111 Li Yu took advantage of his drunken state to ask for them to do it once in a completely inconceivable position. Because the system didn't give any notification, the impatient fish who was desperate for a daughter, held on to Jing Wang and refused to let go, demanding for another round. Still no notifications came, Li Yu became infuriated and vowed to make the notification appear no matter what. Perhaps this bath was not fated for a daughter, then he might as well change locations. He then changed back to human form to continue. He just really wanted a daughter that belonged to the two of them. Like this, Li Yu forgot exactly how many times they've done it. In the end, Jing Wang looked apologetically at him. Li Yu shakily extended one finger. After sighing lightly, Jing Wang wrapped his hand around Li Yu's finger, then put it into the blanket. Li Yu. Jing Wang threw on clothes and got out of bed. Li Yu discovered that while the hubby's back was still straight and upright, his footsteps staggered a little. Li Yu wanted to laugh but at the same time, felt a bit guilty. It was he who was too over the top just now. How could they conceive a daughter in such a short period of time? He couldn't take advantage of the fact that he was a system fish to make unreasonable demands. Although he really did want a daughter, he shouldn't completely ignore his hubby's health. Li Yu opened his mouth, wanting to call and stop the hubby. However, his voice was hoarse from overuse, unable to make any sound. He wanted to turn around and get up. Only then did he discover that while Jing Wang's footsteps were only slightly weakened, he himself already didn't have any feelings below his waist. Looks like in this battle, he killed 800 enemy troops but lost 1000 of his own. Struggling briefly where he laid, Li Yu quickly fell asleep due to exhaustion. Waking up in the middle of the night, he discovered that had already changed back into a fish. Covered by the water grass blanket, he was laying inside the crystal fish tank on the silver stone bed. It must have passed the time limit, so Jing Wang settled him here. The fish form can help relieve exhaustion. Who knows how long he had laid here. Well, at least he now returned to consciousness. Li Yu reluctantly wiggled the water grass blanket off and swam to the wall of the crystal tank to look at the hubby. He was already a lot better now. How was the hubby? The bright moonlight poured in from the windows. The room was quiet and tranquil. However, the bed was completely empty, without the person that Li Yu wanted to see. Li Yu. Did Jing Wang temporarily head out? Li Yu waited for a while but Jing Wang did not return, Li Yu couldn't wait anymore and changed back into human to find him. Yesterday night, they really did it a lot. Li Yu placed his two legs on the ground, feeling like they were all flabby and weak. Walking felt just like floating. If he was not careful, he could easily fall over. Li Yu supported himself by holding onto the furniture nearby and scooted to the door. He was just about to push the door open when he suddenly heard someone saying quietly outside, Your Highness, taking too much medication can be harmful. Please think about this carefully. Yes, this subordinate understands. I won't say any more and I also won't let the princess consort know of this. Li Yu Li Yu already realized that it was Jing Wang and a subordinate outside, discussing something. Normally, when he came across things he shouldn't hear, he'd move away voluntarily. However, hearing the phrase won't let the princess consort know, made him feel briefly awkward. Not listening voluntarily and not letting him know were completely two different things. Furthermore, Jing Wang seemed to have been taking medication while concealing the knowledge from him, and this didn't seem like the first time. This made him somewhat vigilant. Li Yu silently opened the door minutely and immediately saw a shocking scene. Jing Wang was accepting a bowl from a black-clad guard. Without even looking, he downed the bowl of pitch-black liquid. After drinking, 
Jing Wan coughed lightly a bit, wiped his lips and waved his hand to order the guard to withdraw. Li Yu gathered from the subordinate's words and understood that Jing Wan was drinking medicine right now. However, what kind of medicine was it? And why would it harm the body if he drank too much? After just experiencing a huge battle, the fish, who had his head filled with trash, inevitably recalled some drugs used for sexual stimulation. Don't tell him that he almost drained the hubby dry and now the hubby needed to rely on drugs to maintain his vitality and vigor? He and Jing Wang had a very good relationship, their husband and husband life was also very harmonious. Every time, they did it naturally without planning. Li Yu didn't realize at all. Could it be possible that Jing Wang normally had difficulties and needed to rely on drugs to endure? Recalling Jing Wang's staggering footsteps just now, Li Yu felt like this was really rather suspicious. He understood that this matter had nothing to do with the person's appearance or status. People who looked glamorous might have this kind of trouble. From the emperor to generals and ministers and even the common folks, this kind of problem could afflict anyone. If this was the case, then it was no wonder that Jing Wang would hide it from him. After all, a man could be incapable in front of anyone else but he couldn't be incapable in front of his wife, and it's being incapable in that kind of manner. Li Yu could no longer keep thinking down this train of thought. Jing Wang looked like he was just about to enter the room. Li Yu could lay back into bed immediately and pretend he didn't know anything. However, this kind of thing could be hidden for some time but not for a lifetime. He was more worried about its long-term effects which could cause harm to Jing Wang's body. If Jing Wang used the drug more and more in the future, would he become reliant and get more and more impotent? Not allowed. Although their intimate life and personal pride were important, the hubby's body was also very important. Impotence was a type of illness. All illnesses have a cure. Dragging on and delaying its treatment would only make the illness more serious. He definitely couldn't keep ignoring this. He needed to persuade Jing Wang to receive medical treatment promptly. Li Yu stood at the doorway, unmoving. Pushing open the door and entering, Jing Wang immediately saw him and froze. From the location of where Li Yu was standing and his unusually serious expression, Jing Wang immediately connected the dots and realized something. His face color instantly turned unsightly. Tian Chi, I... I saw and heard everything. Don't try to hide it from me. Li Yu said nervously. He needed to figure out the most tactful words to convince Jing Wang to accept treatment. This can be a very hard topic to discuss but I'm even more worried about your health. You. Jing Wang. Jing Wang had a weary expression. Perhaps he was already prepared for the possibility of being discovered by Xiao Yu beforehand that Jing Wang hesitated only for a moment and then pulled out a piece of paper from his sleeve to hand over to Li Yu. Li Yu knew this was Jing Wang's explanation and swiftly opened it to read it. He felt like he understood Jing Wang's temperament very well after being married for more than a year. The reason why Jing Wang would take medicine was most likely for his sake. Therefore, Li Yu definitely wouldn't let Jing Wang feel like Li Yu felt any hints of disdain. Actually, from the very beginning, he had already decided that the hubby was more important than anything else. He should let Jing Wang understand that the correct path was to face this issue together. Li Yu already had everything prepared internally. However, when his gaze fell on the words on the piece of paper, he suddenly froze. It was only a short sentence. He recognized every single word. However, connecting it all together, he didn't really understand it. Because I was born mute. Li Yu, huh? What the heck was this? Jing Wang was mute, he already knew this. But what did this have to do with taking medicine? Did being mute cause impotence? He had never heard of that. Li Yu looked back and forth between Jing Wang and the words on the paper and said in confusion, what does it have to do with this? Jing Wang's expression immediately changed from unsightly to flabbergasted. The two of them very quickly realized that something was not right here. In a small voice, 
Li Yu spoke aloud his suspicions towards Jing Wang's impotence and even added this doesn't really matter for comfort. Jing Wang Jing Wang rubbed the center of his brows. He thought Xiao Yu knew what's going on but actually, Xiao Yu misunderstood. However, with the current situation, since Xiao Yu already discovered him taking medicine, he couldn't keep concealing this. Almost like he was afraid Li Yu would run away, Jing Wang held Li Yu's hand tightly and led him to a table. He lifted the brush and wrote something. This thing was extremely different from Li Yu's thoughts of impotence. So, the drug that Jing Wang took wasn't used for sexual stimulation. Of course, it was also not for treating impotence. Instead, it was a contraceptive. A contraceptive? Li Yu abruptly realized this and, for once, he felt the indignance and fury of being deceived boiling in his chest. No wonder he hadn't been able to get pregnant a second time despite all of his efforts. So, all this time they were doing it, it was completely useless? Why? You know very well that I really want a daughter, yet you. Jing Wang held onto his hands firmly and glanced at the piece of paper with his gaze. Just because of this. In a fit of anger, Li Yu resentfully picked up the piece of paper and read it out loud in front of Jing Wang's face. Jing Wang's body shook heavily. When Li Yu recited those words, he closed his eyes almost in anguish. Li Yu felt like he was struck in the chest viciously by a huge stick. Coming to his senses, he finally realized what he had read. Because I was born mute. Born mute. Born. Mute. Delayed understanding appeared at this moment. In this second, Li Yu finally understood. So, so you're afraid. Trembling, Li Yu let go of the paper slip and fell back into the chair. Jing Wang was born mute. Born, which meant that he was extremely likely to pass it on to his children. It was because of this that he intentionally chose to use contraceptives. But Du Bao and the other boys are all fine. You didn't. Saying this, Li Yu immediately realized that they weren't the same. When he had become pregnant with the fish babies, even he wasn't aware, Jing Wang was even more in the dark. Furthermore, at that time, who could have predicted that a man could become pregnant? At first, there was no need to use contraceptives. Therefore, he became pregnant. And not only did he become pregnant, he gave birth to them. Actually at that time, this risk was also present. He, he just never even thought about it. If one of the babies had inherited Jing Wang's disability, then what? This wasn't something easy to think about. Luckily, their four children were all fine. But what about the future ones? Because of this, Jing Wang took protective measures. That's why Li Yu didn't receive a system notification no matter how diligent he was. He wanted a daughter but in reality with this, it was impossible for him to become pregnant again. I'm sorry Jing Wang wrote. I specifically asked the imperial physicians and also asked Liao Kong. When he asked the imperial physicians, the physicians said that these four were healthy but that didn't mean his other children would also be healthy. When he asked Liao Kong, Liao Kong said that even though Li Yu was a Karpiao, the children were also Jing Wang's offsprings. They looked like him so naturally, they could be born mute just like him. Jing Wang couldn't be certain that his future child wouldn't be mute. He could only make certain that he won't have any more children. He wrote silently not being able to speak is very painful. Rather than having children that could inherit this kind of suffering at birth, why give them such a painful life in the first place? Stunned, Li Yu was speechless. It was only a few sentences with simple wordings, yet they exposed the wound hidden deep in Jing Wang's heart, a pain that he had never spoken about. Jing Wang, he just couldn't speak. This kind of unique anguish, who else could understand it better than him? It was because he understood clearly that he was unwilling to allow his children to inherit it. Even if there's only a tiny bit of possibility, he was unwilling to take the risk. Because once Li Yu became pregnant, neither of them would willingly abandon their child. 
then the only course of action was to not have one and completely cut off all the possibilities. Seeing Li Yu without any response, Jing Wang's inner chaos and worry practically became uncontrollable. In one breath, he wrote down even more sorry s. Li Yu looked at the increasing number of sorry as his vision gradually blurred. Unable to have a cute daughter or more children in the future was really a very sad thing. However, Jing Wang's apprehension wasn't without reason. He was also thinking for the child's sake. Not to mention, Jing Wang himself was a victim and extremely innocent in all this. How could he place all the blame on himself? Li Yu stopped his hand, not letting him write any more. He said tearfully, This is not your fault. Don't think like this. Tian Chi, we have four children. It's already more than enough. Li Yu said, choking with emotion. It's my bad, I didn't know. All this time, you were suffering this pain. Because Jing Wang never displayed any emotions relating to his disability, Li Yu automatically assumed that because Jing Wang had the protagonist halo and a tyrant character setting with his personality being cold and solitary, that he wouldn't be too distraught over his own disability. Li Yu interacted with him day in and day out, already accustomed so much that he unconsciously even forgot that Jing Wang was mute. But this was merely the character setting of a novel. Because feeling pain itself was a kind of weakness, the main protagonist Gong wouldn't have this undesirable trait. However, why wouldn't the real Jing Wang feel pain? He was also a real, live person. Li Yu felt extreme heartache for Jing Wang. He pushed aside the page full of sorry on the table and jumped into Jing Wang's arms, bawling his eyes out. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. I should have noticed before. Jing Wang hastily hugged him in a flurry of arms and wrote words inside his palm with reddened eyes. You're wonderful. With you here, I'm not in pain. Li Yu cried so hard, he hiccuped several times. Legs still somewhat aching, he sat his butt completely on Jing Wang's knees and glared at him with the ferocity of a rabbit. This look was not intimidating at all. You're not allowed to secretly drink medicine anymore. Li Yu started to admonish the hubby relentlessly. Is this the kind of drug that could be taken casually? What if you become impotent, then what? Jing Wang. Actually, Jing Wang ordered a subordinate who knew medicine to check the formula of the drug. It should be fine. However, Jing Wang listened to Xiao Yu's words. Impotence was definitely not allowed. Jing Wang didn't want to be impotent. Therefore, he obediently nodded his head. Xiao Yu already knew everything now anyways. In the future, they could use other methods of birth control. As long as Xiao Yu was willing. Eyes spinning in thought, unsurprisingly, Li Yu came up with one immediately. Burning hot lips pressed over and brushed against Jing Wang's ear, Tian Chi, I have an idea. Enjoying the feeling, Jing Wang listened expectantly. Li Yu said with a light chuckle, why don't you just not enter in the future? Jing Wang. Not being able to enter. This was definitely not good. End chapter. The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish Transmigration Chapter 112 After Jing Wang returned to the imperial capital, the emperor began to regard Jing Wang more highly. With the backing of his achievements in the west frontier and the fact that Jing Wang was the son of the emperor's first wife, even though he couldn't speak, the government officials ultimately couldn't say any words of objection. Earlier for a period of time, the sixth prince had dominated the arena by himself. After he was reprimanded by the emperor for bribery, he rarely appeared in front of people again. His choice to temporarily lay low made plenty of officials who supported the sixth prince start to hesitate. These officials were originally part of the third prince's faction. When the sixth prince revealed his talents, he even did it under the banner of a united front between the two princes. Now that the third prince had fallen out of favor, these people didn't say any words of mercy on behalf of the third prince at all, but instead directly moved over to the sixth prince's side. 
they were opportunists from the start so to be internally conflicted was normal for them. The sixth prince had his plans and didn't bother pacifying them. Currently, Jing Wang was one step ahead. Not only did he have merit, he was even able to rely on his son to temporarily gain the emperor's favor. Because of Lady Liang's pregnancy, the sixth prince had already seen that clearly for himself. The emperor was biased towards Jing Wang. If he openly fought with Jing Wang, he would only be following the third prince's footsteps and become disliked by the emperor. However, if he first pretended to be weak and accurately discovered Jing Wang's weakness, then made the emperor lose trust in him, the emperor would no doubt turn back to the sixth prince. As for what weakness Jing Wang had, the sixth prince was already very confident in his knowledge. Concubine Zhang recently found some new helpers for him. They were distant relatives of the Zhang family, the sixth prince was able to trust them. Privately, he sent a rather capable and smart helper to verify, the best possibility was if he could obtain the thing that the sixth prince wanted. On the outside, the sixth prince couldn't possibly seem more at peace and content with his ranking, as if Jing Wang's gradual rise in power had nothing to do with him. In fact, he was only waiting for a precise piece of news. Then, he would strike down Jing Wang with one hit. Jing Estate Recently, the four babies wet nurse, Madame Qin encountered trouble in her family. Her son was doing business and lost a large amount of money. The debtor practically followed him home and came knocking on his door. Madame Qin used up all of her savings but was still unable to make up for all of it. These last two days, she looked miserable and anxious. She was also unusually negligent in taking care of the babies and made several mistakes. Although they weren't particularly severe, according to Jing Wang's temperament, it was enough to fill her cup. Madame Qin knew she was wrong and knelt down, begging Jing Wang not to expel her from the estate. With her current job, she would be taken care of by the Jing estate in the future, no longer needing to worry about her family for the rest of her life. However, if she was expelled, then she would have nothing. Madame Qin pretty much counted as Li Yu's personal servant. Jing Wang looked towards Li Yu. Although Li Yu was the princess consort now, he's been basically avoiding his duties, never getting involved in affairs inside the estate. Jing Wang considered helping Li Yu establish authority and reputation, however, thinking about what happened with Auntie Su, he estimated that the sense of authority probably won't be possible. Jing Wang could pretty much guess what Xiao Yu would do, so why not just let Xiao Yu build a good relationship here? Jing Wang handed Madame Qin's affairs completely to Li Yu to deal with. Li Yu accepted the olive branch that he handed over. Originally the fish princess consort didn't want to deal with anything because husband and wife with reversed authority wasn't often seen. Li Yu thought he'd last longer if he stayed far away from power and authority. However, the shitty system had already arranged a share the nation task for him, even if he wanted to be idle like wild cranes or floating clouds, it probably wasn't possible. Since he couldn't avoid it, then he needed to meet it head on bravely. Li Yu extended a foot towards the direction of management and carefully experimented. He'll start with handling Madame Qin's issue first. The estate rules were readily available. It would be easy to just follow it and he could avoid problems that way. However, Li Yu remembered that Madame Qin usually had a pretty good work ethic and she was also very meticulous. Why would she suddenly make mistakes one after another? Li Yu asked patiently, what exactly is going on with you? Is there a reason for your frequent mistakes these days? Madame Qin felt teary-eyed. She was only a servant. The little masters hadn't required her milk for a long time. The princess consort only asked her to help take care of the little masters and play with them. She didn't actually have much duties right now, yet she was still getting the salaries of a wet nurse. To make mistakes like this, even Madame Qin felt a deep sense of shame, like she had forsaken the trust that the princess consort had placed on her. However, not only did the princess consort not reprimand her, he even asked her for the reason. 
Madame Chin didn't even care about losing face and started weeping as she described in detail the issue her son was facing. Li Yu asked the exact amount of money he owed. Madame Chin stated a huge sum. Li Yu pondered for a moment and said, This isn't really that difficult. Nanny Chin, since you're the baby's wet nurse, you will be supported by the Jing estate in the future. The Jing estate can first pay this amount of money for you in advance, then the cost will be subtracted from your monthly salary. What Li Yu meant was to utilize the Jing estate to lend Madame Chin money, then have Madame Chin pay it from her salary every month as installment. Although he had no luck in buying antiques, he at least knew that his hubby, who gave him a pile of gemstones to play with, was very wealthy. This money shouldn't mean anything to Jing Wang, however, to Madame Chin, it was enough to save a life. Saving a life was priceless. Furthermore, it's not like he was giving it away for free. Instead it was lending money, the kind that had no interests. Having Madame Chin return a bit at a time monthly, Madame Chin wouldn't feel too distressed and also wouldn't feel ashamed. Actually, since Jing Wang gave him full power to deal with this issue, he could ask Jing Wang to directly help Madame Chin pay off her debt. However, since he was the princess consort now, naturally his thoughts needed to be more profound. Madame Chin was the one who made the mistakes first. If he just helped her return the money for free, it would be too unreasonable. What would the other servants think? That they could take advantage of their mistakes? In comparison to lending aid, the Jing estate's reputation was also very important. That's why he chose to lend the money. This way the Jing estate won't lose out, Madame Qin would also be able to get through her hardship with her own strength. In addition, people viewing this matter would think that the Jing estate was very benevolent. Madame Qin was overjoyed by the unexpected good news of Li Yu's arrangement. She wrote down a receipt for the loan on the spot. Li Yu first looked over it once himself, then asked Jing Wang to examine it before finally giving it to Wang Shi to put away for safekeeping. Li Yu looked at Jing Wang and added, if anyone else in the estate is having the same difficulty, the can all tell his highness and his highness will have a look at it. Jing Wang Jing Wang couldn't help but curl his lips. He originally wanted the princess consorts to build his prestige but in the end the princess consort returned the honor to him. How could Wang Shi not realize that this was for Jing Wang's benefit? Jing Wang already had a terrible reputation outside. Before it didn't matter but now that Jing Wang had the emperor's favor, the most he feared was his momentum to be dragged down by his reputation. If everything could go according to the princess consort's words, it would be considered a good thing. Wang Shi expectantly waited for his master's reply. Jing Wang gave him an eye gesture, do it. Wang Shi went off to make the arrangements in a flurry. Since Madame Qin made mistakes. She still had to be punished in accordance to the estate's rules in order to placate the rest. Li Yu had a slight objection to the lowest punishment of the estate, which was 30 hits with a big wooden plank. Since he was going to manage the estate, Li Yu wanted to seize the opportunity to change that rule a bit. Before when he was a pet fish, the most that he could do in front of Jing Wang was act cute, it wasn't very useful. Now that he was the princess consort, he should at least do what was within his capabilities. Tian Chi, let's discuss for a moment. How about 10 hits on the first offense, then 30 hits on repeat? Li Yu cautiously consulted with Jing Wang. He originally wanted to make it 15 hits but if he directly said 15 hits, it might make Jing Wang feel like it decreased too much. Therefore, Li Yu used a little trick and started with only 10. How could Jing Wang not know what he was thinking? Lips pressed together, he wrote on the paper, first offense, 15 hits. Repeat offense, expulsion from the estate. For the repeat offense to be harsher, there's no arguing against that. Li Yu internally yelp with a victory sign. Outwardly, he agreed reluctantly. Madame Qin gave her thanks non-stop and went to accept the punishment herself. After receiving the punishment, she used the loan receipt to retrieve money from Wang Shi Gong Gong. Then she limped off to return the debt. 
Seeing Madame Chin's appearance, the debtor thought that she had tried to steal her master's money and was beaten up. He scoffed coldly in disdain several times. Considering your wretched appearance, you probably don't have any money. However, I actually have a way here that can help you return the debt. It all depends on if you're willing or not. Although Madame Chin held the banknotes that Wang Shi had allocated to her in her bosom, she ultimately wanted to be cleared of debt for free as well. Therefore, she chose to listen first instead of revealing that she had the money immediately. The other said, I know you're the wet nurse of the Jing estate. I want something. If you can get it, I'll clear your debt completely. Madame Chin's heart jumped rapidly. The other had heard that the little masters inside the Jing estate were quadruplets and wanted to take something of the children to make into a protection amulet, so that does this man wanted something so he could ensure the safety of his pregnant wife at home. This dynasty did have this kind of custom. Actually, a young child's bracelet or handkerchief was enough. Madame Chin had plenty of that already. Just as she agreed to consider this, the other said unexpectedly, I don't want anything else. I only want a drop of the little heir's blood. On one hand, she could honestly return the debt with the money from Jing Estate. On the other hand, she could do what this person had instructed. She had more opportunities to get close to the little heir than other people. It was only obtaining a drop of blood. She could just wait to do it while the little heir was sleeping, it wasn't a hard task. However, Madame Chin was somewhat hesitant. When she reached her hand into her bosom and touched the banknote that the princess consort gave her, Madame Chin bit her lips. The princess consort helped her out of kindness. How could she ignore that, how could she bite the hand that fed her and hurt the little heir in return? This person's intentions were still unknown. Madame Chin composed herself and decided to first delay this person. She said she needed some time to think about it and practically flew back to the Jing estate. Then she knocked on the door to Jing Wang's study. The candlelight inside the study was lit long into the dark hours of the night. After Madame Chin left, Wang Shi entered and stayed for quite a while as well. The next day, Madame Chin found the debtor and said she was at the end of her ropes and was willing to help. That person's eyes were overflowing with a smile of satisfaction. Madame Chin was originally going to do it herself. However, that person said, bring me into the estate. I'll do it myself. Madame Chin knew that the other didn't really trust her. Therefore, she could only follow the other's words. Feigning that the debtor was her relative, she told people that she had brought a relative to the Jing estate, asking Wang Gong Gong if he could possibly give him a job. After numerous questioning and examination, Wang Shi finally agreed to let the man enter the estate. Immediately after entering the gates, the man was practically dazzled by the water winding around and flowing everywhere inside the Jing estate. Madame Chin said with a smile, His Highness loves to raise fish. This is prepared for master fish. The man nodded his head indifferently. Jing Wang's love for raising fish was practically infamous in the imperial capital. The Jing estate was guarded heavily. After that, Madame Chin and the man were examined several times by guards. Finally, she led the man to a courtyard. For some reason, there were actually two fat ducks being raised inside this courtyard. They quacked noisily and were very annoying. The man took a step inside. The two fat ducks actually flew over and started to peck him all over on top of his head. The man raised his palm and was about to hit them. Madame Chin hastily said, don't hit them. These are the princess consort and the little master's pet ducks, brought over from the west frontier. If you hit them and hurt them, the guards outside will discover. Even causing them to lose a single duck feather will lead to physical punishment. The man. First the pet fish, now the pet ducks. What kind of messed up princely estate was this? The West Frontier Ducks were very spirited and hurt the man quite a bit with their beaks. However, for the sake of the big scheme, the man could only silently endure it. Madame Chin decreased her pace and led the man into the inner room. On the bed, 
there was a child laying there, face pointing inward and sleeping soundly. Madame Chin walked over with quick steps and lightly called out, Young master. Half asleep, the child turned over. From afar, the man glanced at the child's appearance. It was the same as the drawing that he had in hand, therefore, he became confident. Seeing that the child was about to wake up, the man hastily made Madame Chin coax the child back to sleep. After the child fell back asleep, the man pulled out a handkerchief and covered the child's face with it, holding it in place for a while. Madame Chin thought he meant to harm the little heir and hastily made a rescue attempt. The man pushed her aside harshly with one hand. Figuring it was enough time, he finally took off the handkerchief. This handkerchief didn't cover the face too tightly, not enough to take anyone's life. However, belladonna powder was smeared on the handkerchief which could put someone into sleep. The man saw that the child was deeply sleeping. Only then did he feel reassured to pull out a silver needle and white porcelain bottle from his other sleeve. Madame Chin collapsed and sat on the floor, unable to watch. After obtaining the blood, the man also took one of the two matching silver bracelets that the child wore and then walked off without any lingering thought of those left behind. All of this was seen by the people waiting next door. Is he gone? Holding Da Bao, Li Yu made a hand gesture at Jing Wang. Jing Wang nodded his head. Da Bao sat in Fish Dad's arms, not even daring to breathe loudly. He also saw the scene just now and faintly understood what Fish Dad meant by would do scary thing to you before. Da Bao knew that he was still small and unable to do anything. Instinctively, he imprinted that person's face to memory, wanting to tell Grandpa Emperor in the future. Jing Wang made certain everything was safe, then shook a jade bell. Soon afterwards, Wang Shi brought Madame Qin into their room. Madame Qin stood there submissively. Jing Wang ordered Wang Shi to rip apart Madame Qin's debt receipt, letting her keep the money as a reward. Madame Qin kowtowed repeatedly in gratitude. The child who was laying on the bed also jumped up and came into the room that Jing Wang was in. In front of Jing Wang, he pulled out a bottle of liquid medicine and skillfully wiped his face with it. The little chubby face that was originally looking similar to Da Bao instantly turned into an adult's face. Even his voice was that of an adult. This was actually an almost child-sized midget, one of Jing Wang's special agents. Jing Wang summoned him for the sake of working together with Madame Qin and Wang Shi to perform an act. The agent finished his greeting and raised his head. Li Yu's eyes lit up immediately. Li Yu thought that this agent was really impressive. When he pretended to be Da Bao, he was at least 50% similar. However, he had to lay down for the somewhat different body physique to become unnoticeable. Using him to trick someone who had never seen Da Bao before and relied on a drawing for recognition, it was more than enough. Was that face sculpting? Li Yu said excitedly. He had already transmigrated into a novel, changed into a fish and gave birth to children. Who would have thought he'd even be able to see face sculpting in this lifetime? The agent froze briefly and then said with a smile, This subordinate doesn't know what face sculpting means. It was just some cosmetics just now, a small insignificant skill. Even if it's not face sculpting, it's still very impressive. How did you manage to do it? Li Yu couldn't even hold back his curiosity. The agent was originally going to explain to Li Yu in detail, However after glancing at Jing Wang's extremely dark face, which was as black as the bottom of a pot, the agent respectfully cupped his hands towards the two masters and then decisively asked to be excused. Li Yu The oblivious princess consort returned to paying attention to the hubby's grand scheme. Plotting against someone together with Jing Wang, this kind of feeling was too fun and satisfying especially when the other had believed that victory was within grasp and that he had already obtained the little heir's blood, when in actuality, he dug himself into a corner. Who this man was, Li Yu could guess it even if he thought with his toes. He was only worried if the sixth prince would felt suspicious. Your Highness, will he believe it? Li Yu asked. He will Jing Wang was rather certain. 
The sixth prince was a cautious person. If everything went completely smoothly, then he definitely would have been suspicious. That's why Jing Wang had ordered the guards to cross-examine the debtor several times. Li Yu even let out the duck army to guard the house and peck the man several times in succession. The more dangerous a situation was, the more real it would make the other feel. Jing Wang knew that the sixth prince had been searching for a weakness of his all this time. Now he voluntarily handed one over. If the sixth prince went back to concealing himself, it would be hard to deal with him. However, what if he was given information that was extremely detrimental to Jing Wang, what would he do? Although this information was fake, as long as the sixth prince believed it to be true, it was enough. End chapter